Hey, I'm going to show you how to install this Humminbird uh, Helix 7. Uh, it's a 7 inch uh, fish finder with sonar, down imaging, and side scan. Um, I'm going to show you how to install it on my Pelican 110 HD uh, pedal drive kayak. Uh, it's a 10 foot kayak. It's 30 four or so inches wide. So first in your unit, you're going to get your sonar unit. You're going to get your fusible link. Um, I've already put a connector on this uh, before I started the video. So you get your fusible link. We're going to use the Scotty ball mount. Um, and I've already had this unit mounted here. Uh, I'm just on the video to go over the install for someone doesn't know how to do it. Um, and I'll go over in detail what these are here and what I use to mount this. We're gonna use the Scotty transducer mount. These waterproof plugs. Cable glands, and some miscellaneous stuff. So we'll use the starport mount uh, for the rail blaza, some heat shrink, some cutting board pieces. Um, I'll link down below the, the cutting boards that, that I use, and then we'll have some electrical connections to do. So we'll have some heat shrink butt connectors, some spade connectors, and whatnot. Um, so we'll put those out of the way for now. Flush cut cutters. Um, I'm going to put some zip tie stuff on mine. I highly recommend that you use flush cut cutters when trimming zip ties um, so that they don't leave like a sharp edge, um, it'll, it'll, you know, cut your hand. For the battery box, I've already mounted mine. This is a small cutting board off of Amazon. This is an outdoor products box, a uh, waterproof box that I just drilled four small holes and mounted it to the cutting board. And I have a hole here, which is what our cables are gonna run through and our battery is gonna go inside of that. And then where this is going to go is back here on these two Scotty tracks. Um, so the battery of the box will sit back here behind my seat, uh, kind of out of the way. In the kit, you're going to get, well, in your unit, you're going to get your transducer. And like I said, this is the Scotty transducer mount. Uh, transducer arm, sorry. So what I've done is I've mounted with a stainless steel nut and bolt that comes with the unit, um, the transducer to the Scotty mount, and then ran our wiring up through there and then kind of coiled it up. Uh, one other thing that we're gonna need is some wire, some, some ground for our ground um, going to the battery. And then also in the unit you're gonna in your in your helix 7 box or whatever unit you have it's going to come with your power cables and whatnot and so you have your positive and negative here um, and then we'll hook these up here shortly i did use some stainless steel screws um i recommend using stainless steel screws and i'll go over here in a minute why I have these and you'll need some wire strippers and some crimpers. Um, I recommend a good set of crimpers so you're not you know, killing yourself or making shoddy connections. Um, I think these were like $25. Um, they might have been a little bit more. I don't remember. I I'll link them below um, what they were and they're made by IWIS and they are ratcheting crimpers. Um, I like them, they're very comfortable. 
they're not hard on the hands when you try to crimp uh, butt connectors. So these are the parts and the supplies that are going to be used um, and we'll get started. Okay, so I've gotten most of the stuff out of the way um, here that we're going to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to give us some some leads here. Now this is going to go to to butt connectors. So we're going to have our power going to two butt connectors. And then we're going to use our power cables here. We're going to have one that's going to be attached to the battery box, which we will sort that out here in a minute. And then we're going to have our connector that's going to go here. For you're definitely going to want to use some heat shrink, um, even though these are heat shrink butt connectors. Um, you still want to use some heat shrink, so we're going to put some heat shrink on there, and then I'll link the kit down below. And then I also have some old, I think that should be okay, I have some, some really old uh, Radio Shack heat, heat shrink. Uh, let's see if we can get two butt connectors in there. Yep, that should be fine. So. We're going to cut this into two pieces. Actually, we probably should have left that, so we'll use this. Is this big enough? Let's see if this is big enough for, yeah, once that shrinks down. So for right now, we're going to have two pieces of heat shrink there, two butt connectors. So I'm going to get a little bit more lead off of here. Let's stop crimpers. And we're going to strip this wire just a little bit more. And we'll do the same thing here with the negative lead. Sorry about the noise in the background. I don't know. There's a recent fascination with stupid sounding cars. Um, so the lead, you know, we want to put this into our butt connector there. Go ahead and crimp that down. That's nice and tight. And then we'll do the same thing with the positive lead. Crimp that down. And we'll run it through again, just to make sure it's tight. So now we've got our two butt connectors onto our plug. And then this is gonna connect to our power lead that plugs into the, uh, the, uh, so I'm not going to, for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to use those. I'm just going to use the solid piece here. So we need to go ahead and strip these. And these, I'm not sure where I got these crimpers at. I mean, these wire strippers at. Um, they don't have a name on them. I want to say I got these from Walmart, but I really, surprisingly a tool from Walmart, I really like them. Um, I've never had any issues with them. A lot of things from you know Walmart are kind of eh, questionable. So to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna first put that in to the crimper, make sure we got red to red. And 
coming out nice and tight. And then we'll put the ground and we'll do the same thing. Cover it down. And then we will run our heat shrink. Well, actually we have to do this. So let me get the probably gonna have to use a lighter because I don't have my heat gun broke, so and I haven't got a replacement. So these just take a second to heat. And these actually have some kind of resin or glue or something in them. And they seal pretty good. Um, I like these down below. I like these butt connectors. So these will actually seal. Uh, you know, as they as they shrink, um, I don't know if I don't know if you can see, but you can see right there. Oh, it's not going to focus that far away. There's a little bit of you know glue or something that comes out, and that seals up around the wire. So we'll put this on there, and of course, it's not long enough, but it's good enough for. demonstration I don't know if I can get this over no yeah so we probably should have took those back a little bit longer when I sized it at first um, that's my mistake um, it won't affect the functionality but I'll go back and redo it so we we'll just want to heat that up some and then let that shrink around those butt connectors. Now, when you put your heat shrink on, you want to avoid doing exactly what I did, cutting it too. Sh Actually, I don't even, I don't think I cut this, but no, I can't fit this other piece. I did have another piece that I thought maybe I could fit over that, but I can't. So. You want to avoid cutting that too short or using too short of a heat shrink. Um, I don't have any more of this size. This one is a little bit bigger um, because I've already set this fish finder up and I used all my heat shrink up. So for demonstration purposes, that this will work uh, for now. So now we have the power unit or, or the power adapter um, that's all set up and ready to go now what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to make a disconnect quick disconnect here that's waterproof so we'll take that off for now and let's get our battery box All right, so we have the battery box here, and this is Outdoor Products um, box. It'll be uh, linked below. Cutting board. It's mounted to the cutting board with the with well with four screws going through the box. But on here to mount it to my Scotty tracks, I used the Rob Rail Blaza Blaza whatever you want to call it Starport track mount kit. So we'll put these, we don't need those anymore. And basically what I had to do is here on the Scotty track, I had to take my grinder and kind of widen this just a little bit because of the angles of these. Um, I needed to make this port area here, this opening extend down here a little further. Um, So in our battery box, we got four, four screws and that's screwed to the cutting board. And the reason I did that on the cutting board is I can unscrew this box and still have the base cutting board mount. So if I want to put a bigger box or a smaller box or change the angle or put two smaller boxes, eventually I'm going to switch to 
a lithium battery. Right now I'm using one of these seven and a half amp hour sealed lead acid battery. This battery weighs six and a half pounds. Um, getting rid of my old kayak and going to the Pelican, I wanted to cut down on weight. So enough, ram enough rambling. All right, so next we want to use our cable glands. And so we're going to want to find, find out which cable gland to use here. So let's take that out and, and that looks a little on the big side. So I think we can go, we may be able to go down to this size. Let's see. Yeah, so that one fits perfect. So what that's gonna do, we're gonna slide this over that. We're gonna unscrew the back here. Make note, keep note of the washer, the rubber washer that's on the back of there. So we're gonna run our gland through there. And actually it looks like the hole that I made was for the bigger gland. So it's gonna be the next size gland up. And before you drill your hole in the box, um, check your cable gland size for which cable gland you wanna use. Uh, I thought that I used a small one, but apparently I didn't. And what that's gonna do is, when you tighten down on this, it's gonna compress that little rubber seal right in there. I don't know if it's gonna focus. Right inside there, there's a rubber seal, okay? So when you tighten this down, it's gonna clamp down on that rubber seal. And then you have your nut that comes off of there. All right, so what we need to do here is get a little bit more wire off. A little bit more of a lead there. A little bit of a lead there. And then we're going to put two butt connectors. Put one on positive, one on the negative. So now we're going to take our fuse block. Oh, actually, no, we want to put this in here first. So before we go getting crazy, we'll put that on there. and then run our cable gland. In here. And then put the nut, take the nut off the back of the cable gland. Put it around here. Thread it on. Let's get a little bit closer here. So we have the nut in here. Run it down, throw it through. Tighten it down. So now you can see we have the cable gland and the plug going through the box. So now we tighten that down. Now this is waterproof. Um, very unlikely that any water is going to get through there. As long as you don't drill the hole out too too big. Um, the cable gland that I used was the PG9. And the drill bit that I used, let's see.
the drill bit that I used was a half inch. Um, for some reason, I couldn't find my regular half inch drill bit. Uh, so I had to use one of these wood like auger bits, whatever. I don't know what they're called. I, I don't use them very often. I'm not like a woodworker, so. Half inch and the PG-9. So if you order this kit, uh, it's real cheap. Um, and it comes with all these cable glands. So you'll be able to do this numerous times. The PG-9. with a half inch drill bit or half inch hole. Now the hole, a half inch is gonna be a little tight. So that's why I was able to actually thread it in so it's it's even you know less uh, chance of it leaking. The unit's gonna come with your fuse. Um, this one has a three amp fuse. I put a little female spade connector on here already so we'll go ahead and strip a little bit of that off we'll get the positive side and our crimpers here actually I should have twisted that so we get the positive side and our crimpers here Crimp that down, and then we're going to use some black, uh, just general wire. I think it's 16 gauge or so wire. Um, I happen to have a piece here that I already put a spade connector on, and you just use spade connector just like this. Um, because this one's positive. Uh, it's it's going to be hot. I used one that has a plastic protector on it, the ground. I guess you could do the same thing with the ground. Uh, I chose not to. So we will strip some of that off of there. Get our butt connector and the crimpers are ready that down. Now we have positive, negative, and it's fused. So how this is going to work, I'm going to put our battery in there, just like that. And I actually cut out some pieces of foam. These are from a mat, like an anti fatigue mat from Harbor Freight. Um, basically what I did was I just cut out a couple pieces there, sized them to, to fit, um, you know, kind of like that. And then hook up our ground. We'll give this a little bit of a lead here give a little bit of a lead there, screw that down, and then just kind of finagle your positive wire in there, and now it's good to go. Um, I do the, when I lay the battery down, I do the positive terminal up, so that way I can just reach in, pull the terminal off, close the box, and it's ready to go. So for this, let's come over here. Got the rail blaza star ports there, star port track mount kit, whatever it's called. And that is gonna go into the Scotty track. Twist these down, and now it's pretty much uh, attached. It's, it's pretty stationary. Um, 
It's certainly not going to go anywhere. Uh, I used this padding, foam padding, to go in here to keep it, you know, the battery from shifting around. And there we go. There's our battery box. Okay, so now that we have the battery box uh, ready to go, let's hook up our plug here. And like I said, I'll, I'll link these plugs down below. Um, these are waterproof. They're quick disconnects. Um, I, I like them a lot. So we'll route the plug, you know, kind of around here, around this area where the seat where the seat goes, and I'll route it up here and around, and now comes the part to mount the piece of cutting board. So let's move up here a little bit. So what I did was I took the short screws out of the Scotty track. I took two, four, six, eight of them out. I took a piece of cutting board. Um, this is just a rough cut. Uh, I didn't really round it off or anything. I lined it up with the holes on the Scotty track and I used longer screws to run through the cutting board, through Scotty track and into the kayak. The reason that I did this is the seven inch unit is a pretty good size unit. So when this is on here, you know, if you only got four screws going to this plastic, it's only putting the load on those four screws. So I used the cutting board to spread the load, you know, across eight screws, yeah, two, four, six, eight, eight screws as opposed to only four. Now, the only downside with using this is you have to put your transducer mount on first because it's gonna, the way that I have mine mounted, I mount mine right here at the very front of the track. Um, front or back, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it's right within arm's reach that I can just loosen this up, spin it out, and spin it down. Yeah. So right here I used a Velcro strip and really the only thing I have that for is to keep it from you know rubbing up against the kayak. You know I don't want it to damage the kayak or the transducer. Probably not needed, but you know, you get it bored and do things like that. So we put the Scotty mount or the the trans the Scotty transducer mount, transducer arm, and that is this product here. Now, some other people said that this came with some other hardware. Mine didn't. It it only came with the hardware that. I have hooked up here. It didn't come with all kinds of bolts and washers, only the ones that are here. Um, so, sorry, racetrack next door to the garage. So maybe some other people had a, a different mount. Uh, I, I'm not really sure, but this worked for me. I just used a stainless steel nut and bolt. And I actually, I think this came with the transducer. Um, I didn't put the little collars on there. I just ran a nut and bolt through. Um, it's a kayak. It's, it's not, you know, a boat that's still on 40 miles an hour. Um, I don't really see it being an issue. So now this is mounted. So we have the transducer. We got a power cable. So we'll go ahead and put the cutting board piece on. So what I did was I pulled the track off, I lined it up, marked the holes, drilled the holes, um, set it through, you know, 
run the screws through. And we'll run these two. As soon as I get them threaded, I will hit it with the drill, but make sure that make sure that we're in. You definitely don't want to st strip these out uh, because if you do, you'll have to get creative, move the Scotty track up some or drill it out, use bigger bigger diameter screws. Um, I think that's probably it. So I'll just run them down almost all the way. Now, I've seen some people take a drill and they run screws down into their kayak um, until the drill stops. Um, I would highly recommend against doing that. Um, the reason is if you run it down too far, it, it's really easy to strip these out because you're dealing with plastic. And once you strip them out, there's there's really not, not much that you can do. Okay, so we have the, the cutting board plate on there now. I guess you could just call it like a mounting plate. So we'll take our ball mount here. We'll take the bottom part, put that on. The screws that I used are slightly too long, so let's actually get a better look here. So what I did was I just take four washers, put the washers there, and the only reason I did that is the screws, the points on the screws stick out and I just didn't want it to uh, damage the Scotty track. Um, you know, put indents in the Scotty track. So now, even though we still only have four screws in the in the ball mount, it's mounted to the plate below that is spread across eight screws in the Scotty track. So you can see here, I mean, I'm putting some good amount of force on that. It's definitely more force than the unit is gonna put on there. So we can come back out some. Now underneath the here on, on the Hummingbird I don't know what this brag gimbal mount. I think I think it's called a gimbal mount. Um, I really didn't have any nuts or bolts that were just the right size. They were they were either all too long and I have to cut them down or whatever. So what I did was to keep it clean looking. I used the screws that came with it. You know they're nice uh, black painted screws, and I took. A little piece of a cutting board. I took a little piece of a cutting board and cut it. And then cut it in some little pieces, drilled a hole in it, ran the screws through there. These are coarse thread screws. Um, and then that gave me four mounting points. They're real short screws. They don't have sharp edges sticking out. Um, I mean, outside of just a little point, but it, it's, it's not, 
you can see it it's not uh it doesn't protrude down below the mount so that worked out well so we can screw that on there and then just loosen that up some let's get a better angle here Your unit is going to come with these uh, little thumb tab screws, you know, for the for the gimbal mount, and you have these little notches that they're going to that they're going to go into. Um, just take your time when mounting it. Um, you know, it is a fairly expensive unit, so don't force it. And now the unit. is mounted there on the ball mount. So, I take it down here. We've got our power. And the transducer. So we'll run the power on the transducer. Now, I like to run the power underneath of this arm. The transducer is kind of, we'll zip tie that up a little bit after we get the mount. Now, what I find works really well, and actually it's actually a little dim there. What I find works really well is to sit the top of the bowl and this is going to depend, of course, on how you made, if you make the plate. Um, sit the top of the ball on this gear head that came with the, the transducer arm. And the reason that I do that is it just gives it a little bit, a little added support there. Um, there's not anything that it's flexing. So we'll tighten that down. And now that unit's pretty solid. So if we come around here to the back, let's see. Come around here to the back. So we got our power and we have, now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put the transducer arm down. If I can do this without hitting the camera. I'm gonna put the transducer arm down where it's gonna be. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to figure out what kind of power we need and actually, or I'm sorry, what kind of length we're going to need. And actually I misspoke. I didn't, don't run your wire underneath of the Scotty, the transducer arm, run it between the gear head and the ball mount. And it's going to keep the, it's going to keep the wire free from, you know, you're putting the transducer up and down, swinging it around. It's just going to keep the, the wire from, you know, rubbing on there. So we'll give the transducer here enough, kind of an, enough wire there to, to flex. Get a couple zip ties. Some people don't like to use zip ties. To me, it doesn't matter. I could just, you could just clip them off. Actually, I should have done that. So we'll just run another one. So we've got, I, I put my transducer wire right there. Um, I just coil it up, put it behind the unit. There's really um, nothing going on right behind the unit, so not really concerned too much with something catching up on it. Um, don't forget your flush cuts. Use the flush cuts and it's nice and smooth. There's no, no sharp edges there. So now we have 
power, the transducer wire. Um, if you wanted to zip tie that further up or some people cut it, um, I, I wouldn't, I really wouldn't cut it. Um, it might not have any issues, but it's just not, to me, it's not worth cutting the wire. The transducer itself is like 150 bucks. So cut it if you want. If, if you don't, coil it up and put it behind there, similar to how I did. So as you can see, the, the transducer kind of comes up here, comes out of the way, and I can just uh, tighten that down. And that's pretty much it. So let's hook up the battery here. No matter what the unit says, there's some other people that have said that the ice fishing unit doesn't use a fuse or it's got a fuse built in, put a fuse on it. Um, I mean, we're talking about a $400 unit or, you know, depending on if you get it on sale, it might be more than 400, it might be less than 400. A um, dollar fifty fuse is insurance, you know, cheap insurance for a $400 unit. So we'll plug that in and then let's come around here to the unit. I'll spin, spin it around, turn it on. And the unit is good to go. It's done. Um, I usually run like a zip tie right around here and a zip tie in the back. So we'll go ahead and power this off. Um, we've obviously seen that it works. So I have a pad eye right here. Uh, it did not come with the kayak. Um, I put that on. So, I usually put a zip tie there. Flush cut that. And then I put one up in the front. And then I have this little piece of foam that I kind of stick down in there. It keeps the battery from moving around. Um, we can unhook that. We don't need that. Move all this stuff over here. Leave enough slack so that your wire can run, you know, underneath the seat mount. Um, I only took my seat out for, for the video just to have the stuff to put there. Um, aside from that, my seat doesn't come out of the kayak. But just be mindful of however you run this. Don't smash it with the seat. I, I guess you could put maybe the Hobie uh, through hole wiring kit. Or you could use another cable gland and maybe run it in so inside the hole there. And then you would have to figure out somehow in here, you know, how to whatever, get, get the wire out. Um, I didn't do that just because aside from, aside from this here, this mount, uh, uh, the, the cutting board plate, it, the, the whole unit is removable. So I can actually, if I don't want to take, if I want to take the unit off, what I will do is instead of trying to take the, the whole gear head off, I'll 
I'll just disconnect it here. And now the whole thing, I, I can just take the whole thing off. Um, now, I would still have the issue of the power cable, you know, being uh, zip tied in place, but I suppose what you could, what you could do to, let me get this on here. What you could do to kind of avoid that is you could put down here another one of those waterproof connectors, uh, screw type connectors. Um, and then that would allow you to just quickly unscrew it, undo the transducer, take the whole unit off. Um, that is pretty much it. Uh, if you followed the video, um, if you have any questions, put something in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just make sure you use good quality butt connectors. Make sure you got a good set of crimpers. Um, don't forget the fuse. Always use a fuse. Um, and then this is kind of a good idea with the battery box behind the seat. So we'll put the seat. Oh, my thing is. So as you can see here, the seat is actually up in the full upright position. And it's not, you know, touching. It's, it's not in the way of the seat. I can still reach around, I can get everything. And, you know, life jacket. You, you could also, if you wanted to, I mean, I could still fit a cooler back there, it, it, you know, if I made something to go across the top or whatever. Um, also, great life jacket. Uh, if you have a life jacket, wear it. So, that's it, that's all I got. Um, it shouldn't take, even though the video was a little bit lengthy because of rambling and whatnot, it shouldn't take you know, more than an hour to, to do the whole install. If you're, you know, kind of thinking things out and figuring out how it, how, how you're going to do everything. Um, if you already have an idea of how to deal with electrical stuff and you have, you know, mechanical ability, it's relatively easy. Um, that's it. That's all I got. Thanks for watching.